just heard the introduction by none other than Toby Nwigwi. The title of the introduction song is titled Let It Shine. It is a shine live experience. And so I'm your host, Julian Smart Rimple, King Jules. We are back yet again for another very special edition of the Run the Jewels Facebook Live Show and BitCast Podcast Series. Uh, you all are in for a treat uh, tonight. We are on episode 126. Uh, we appreciate and shout out our fellow Jewels uh, that are already tuning in, uh, that are here, uh, ready to rock, ready to uh, go with us uh, this evening uh, for episode 126, Toastmasters Changed My Life. Uh, if you don't know about Toastmasters, you better ask somebody because you will have a thorough uh, introduction uh, to this phenomenal and dynamic uh, organi international organization uh, that is literally globally uh, recognized and known. And uh, we're going to be bringing in my special guest in a second, but uh, quick housekeeping, share this content because uh, this is going to be a very impactful and powerful episode. If you are an entrepreneur or if you are a, a speaker, a leader uh, in any type of way or whether you want to be any of the three, uh, you are going to be in for a treat uh, this evening to know about how Toastmasters changed uh, my special guest life. And so uh, click the notification bell also. Uh, if you have not been following us, if this is your first time, uh, you're in for a treat. Uh, this is the Run the Jewels Bitcast podcast series and Facebook live show. And I'm your host, uh, Julian Smart Rimple King Jules. And so shout out again to those uh, that are tuning in the watch party. We appreciate you. Uh, Ashley, we appreciate you. Uh, I think I saw Keith. We appreciate you, Rod, uh, for tuning in and all of those who will be watching the replay. Uh, tonight's episode has been sponsored uh, by Soul Care Sundays, an uh, open mic uh, edition that is coming up in September. Uh, so click the link that I'm about to put in the comment section if you are an artist or creative, a spoken word artist or an entertainer or a motivational speaker even, uh, any creative uh, that is willing to come on the online open mic su Sunday uh, Soul Care um, special edition that they have coming up later uh, this fall. Uh, definitely you will want to sign up. Slots are going to go fast. It's first come, first serve. For those who have never participated in the open mic, I know you're going to be in for a treat. And so shout out uh, to all of those creatives out there. Uh, we do do sponsorships for businesses and also for uh, services that entrepreneurs provide uh, because we support small business owners and entrepreneurs on the RTJ show. If you are interested, uh, you can click also in the comment section uh, to sign up to be a VIP sponsor on the show or even to be a potential guest. We're always looking for new guests to come on the show. And so click the link that's also in the comment section uh, if you want to sign up for a future sponsorship or even to possibly um, be invited to be a guest on our show. Uh, but we're about to bring in our special guest. I know he's queued up and ready to go. Uh, he's a dynamic uh, man, uh, definitely with a master plan uh, that literally uh, taught me a lot, if not most of what I know as a confident speaker. Uh, he's definitely been a mentor and also a, 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 a friend and also uh, literally an inspiration for myself and countless uh, others uh, that he sold into uh, from uh, literally my early days at Kennesaw State University uh, going to uh, this club called the Knowledge Club. And so I'm about to bring him in so he can tell you a little bit more about what he does uh, as a businessman and an entrepreneur, and most importantly, as a Toastmaster and a motivational speaker. And so I'm about to get ready to cue him in. Uh, he goes by the name of Modi to me, but his government is Trushar. And so Trushar Modi, how you doing today, sir? Oh, I am all papped up to be on your show, Julian. <laughs> I appreciate you coming on again to bless us with the jewels this evening, Modi. But tell us a little bit about yourself, sir. People want to know uh, who you are and also tell us a little bit about what you do and also where you grew up. All right. Thank you. Thank you for this wonderful introduction. I am blessed. And I like the song, the title song, you know, Let It Shine. I think we should all say that every moment we are aware. Let it shine because that's what life is all about. Let it shine. And today we're going to talk about how Toastmaster changed my life. 
And so to answer your question, let me give you a little bit of introduction about myself. Um, my name is Trushar Modi, and I'm born in India. And I came here when I was 26 years old. Now, how many of you would believe me if I told you that I was born in Jurassic Park? <laughs> <laughs> a whole danger zone. Right. And, and it is true. The place where I was born, they found a few eggs. And the biggest egg of a dinosaur is five kilograms big. Mm. So it's really big. I visited it a couple of times. They could build a museum there. And it's one of the top yeah, three yeah. sites. It's one of the top three sites in the world where archaeologists and paleontologists go there for their research. So it's a really bubbling place. Um, when I was born, it was a very remote place, but now it's a bubbling place. So, you know, that's true. I was born in Jurassic Park. I came, you know, by, by education, I'm a chartered accountant from India. I did cost accounting. I did BS in finance. So I'd, I've got a lot of accounting and finance degrees. I came to India and I did um, CPA. But CPA did not attract me as much. It did not engage me. You know, I didn't want to be in a back room crunching historical numbers. I wanted to be in a place of action with people. And so um, I started my business. Um, I, had I, I had about eight or nine retail manufacturing service industries uh, um, on the East Coast. But that did not bring me happiness. That bring, did not bring me happiness. You know, uh, I was working like a maniac, chasing money. I had a, I had a stretch limousine that was as big as Donald Trump's limousine. You know, Cadillac with a bar and a VCR inside. At that time, there was no DVD player. And so, what I did is in in 1999, I decided with my family. I sat down and said, "What is it that I want in life?" And I wanted to follow my passion. So I sold everything off, gave it, gave it some of it to my partners, and I came to Atlanta. And when I came here, I, I started pursuing my passion. So I opened up a company called The Knowledge Shop. We had experts from all over the world come, come here and teach short and sweet classes. The world's fastest reader would come and teach you speed reading. The person who had a memory record, a record for memory, would come and teach you how to remember things. You know, person who had written 110 books would teach you how to write books and self-publish them. So I had this wonderful place where I learned a lot of things, but there was one thing lacking in me, and that was confidence. I had a fear of speaking in front of public. I was not very good with communicating. I had very little leadership skills, and that's when I heard about Toastmasters. My mentor told me to think about Toastmasters. So in the year 2000, I joined Toastmasters here in Kennesaw. And I went for three meetings. And when I saw other people speak, I said, I can't do that. And I quit. In the year 2002, the in the city of Marietta, Georgia, where my business was, I had the mayor, the economic development officer, the council person come in. And we had a big open house. And everybody said a wonder, few good words about my business. And then the microphone came to me. And guess what happened? I desperately needed a diaper. I got so nervous, I couldn't speak. I, I babbled. And that's when I decided that I got to do something about it. And so in the year 2004, right in the knowledge shop, we opened up this Toastmaster institution called the Knowledge Club. And that was such an awesome thing because it changed my life. It brought me the confidence. It made me a very good speaker. You know, it gave me leadership skills. And today I go out and I train. I'm a corporate trainer in soft skills. Soft skills are what is we are born with. These are the skills that is our mindset, all right? Our, and so I train people how to run their mind efficiently. And I'm so thankful to Toastmasters that I got a launching pad to shoot this rocket into outer space and circumvent the globe so fast that I can now go and share to it. a lot of people all around the country and tell them good things. So here I am in, in my journey in life, and, and I'm sure Julian is going to ask me a few more questions. So I don't want to bore the audience with a lot of things about myself. What is more important for me is the message, not the messenger. All right. When you speak, it's the message that is the most important. If you want to do a motivational speech, make sure your message is powerful. So, Julian, back to you. 
Absolutely, Modi. And, and we definitely uh, appreciate uh, all of the hard work and dedication that you put uh, even in coming over from India to uh, be a, a dynamic speaker and also uh, even a communicator and effective listener. And so uh, I know uh, that you had a large amount of um, mentorship in my uh, position in coming in as a college student at Toastmasters. But for those that don't know, uh, Modi, tell, tell the audience a little bit about what is Toastmasters and also uh, how have you uh, grown uh, with your roles uh, since becoming a member of Toastmasters until now? That's an excellent question, Julian. And Toastmaster is an international organization. There are, I think, 300,000 members all over the world. And there's, pro I, I don't, I don't even know the numbers, but there's thousands of Toastmasters. Just in Georgia, we're probably talking about a couple of hundred Toastmaster clubs. So Toastmaster is a very well recognized institution. It's a very established institution. I think it's about 85 years old and it, start, it was started as a communication and a leadership club. Now, people may not have heard about Toastmasters, but people have heard about Dale Carnegie, all right? And Toastmasters and Dale Carnegie, in my opinion, are the same thing. They both teach you soft skills, especially skills in, communication, leadership. And, you know, Toastmaster is so inexpensive that I would say if you were going to go to Dale Carnegie, I would come to Toastmasters. Now, there's also another reason why Toastmasters is a step ahead of Dale Carnegie. And the reason is that Toastmasters is a self-supporting organization. It's a nonprofit organization, unlike Dale Carnegie. That means that each member supports other members. When I started, I, people held my hand because I was so afraid to speak. As I told you in the year 2000, after three meetings, I quit the club and I was so afraid to speak. I was terrified. And if there, it were not for these wonderful mentors I had, the great people I had, I would not be able to be where I am today, where I go and speak in front of hundreds of people. So Toastmasters is an organization that builds your soft skills. All right, and it's a very, very, very powerful institution. I urge everybody to go to this website. It's just like we said, Toastmasters, T-O-A-S-T-M-A-S-T-E-R-S dot O-R-G, Toastmasters dot org, and look at it and go to a couple of clubs and then give it, give it a leap of faith and try it out and give it a few months and you'll see how powerful it is. You'll get the confidence. That's what happened to me. I lost my fear. The best thing we can do is lose fear of something we have. And I lost my fear of speaking in front of people. And that's because of Toastmasters. So look at this website. Go and do it. If you have any questions at the end of this meeting, I'm going to put my link for my email address, um, my business website, my phone number if anybody wants to call me. And I'll be glad to answer any questions you have. All right. So please have a take a leap of faith and attend a few meetings. Absolutely. And and I know uh, Modi uh, was literally the founder of our Toastmasters Club uh, that I had the pleasure of joining. And it was at the time. And I know uh, uh, Modi uh, was the gel to bring this together. One of the most diverse and international clubs uh, that we had here uh, in Atlanta, especially uh, when it came to all of the members uh, from all across the world, from Africa, Asia, Europe, Australia, um, of course, Central and South uh, America and the U.S. But uh, like Modi, talk talk to us about like how did you get uh, the gel or the secret sauce together uh, to have the Knowledge Club be uh, basically a, a learning, an international like learning hub for people that were trying to be effective speakers and also effective leaders. Like talk to us about how did you get that secret sauce together to have an international uh, club? That's, that's an awesome question too, my friend. So Toastmaster is unique because you learn at your own pace, number one. Number two, you learn in small nuggets. Number three, you get instant feedback. 
So if I gave a speech today and people told me that this is what you can improve on, immediately within a week or two, I give the next speech. I know what I need to work on and I get an iterative improvement. Step by step, I climb this ladder. And for me, okay. I, made, I made some goals, what I want to do. You know, first year, I just wanted to keep my feet on the floor because I was stepping too much. I was so nervous. Four or five years later, I wanted to bring humor in my speech. So I, I on the contrary, joined an another, another club, which is an advanced club, which is called the Joker's Wild. And we, you have to give humorous speeches. It's very hard to speak uh, and make people laugh. Um, you know, so those are the kind of things that Toastmaster does. It, it's an iterative process. Somebody holds your hand. You have mentors. You have a very structured program that's been tried and approved for more than 80 years. And it's a very diverse program, you know, learning how to speak in front of people in different ways. You know, you, you want to work on your voice, you can do that. You want to talk on radio like Julian is does, you can you can work on that manual. They have different manuals. And the highest accreditation is called Distinguished Toastmaster. It takes about anywhere from three to 10 years, depending on how fast you want to go. You can go at your own pace and you can learn this different wonderful things and you can become a DTM. It's a very recognized you know, accreditation. If I want to hire somebody and they tell me they are DTM, I would give them a job in my company compared if other things were equal because I know what it takes to be a DTM. You know how much confidence you get. You know how many le leadership engagements you have done. You know you worked on pe worked with people. You know you led people. You've done things in a voluntary organization. It is not easy to lead in a voluntary organization because you have no power and authority. That means you have to use your negotiation and persuasion skills to do that. So you sharpen those skills too. You know, not only do you learn to speak, but you learn to lead. And it's a very powerful institution. If you put your heart behind it, I guarantee you, you will come out a winner. Back to you, Julian. Yeah, absolutely. And definitely all of the people I know that have come under your, your leadership and also uh, your tutelage have all gone on to do big and, and great, humongous things, even with Toastmasters International, but even with their own companies or even their businesses. And so I know, uh, Modi, you're a businessman, uh, just like a lot of our uh, entrepreneur uh, jewels that are watching. So like how and why um, should uh, business owners and entrepreneurs um, literally fine tune, not just their speaking, but even their leadership skills in Toastmasters? How can it impact like an entrepreneur or a small business owner's uh, life and also their pockets mon monetizing? All right, so look at some of the great leaders in the world, maybe living or dead. What do they have in common? They have one thing in common, they communicate very well. They can get their point across. They can convince people, all right? And that's what Toastmasters is about. How can you work on those type of skills? Um, and if you want to be in business, if you look at marketing, you know, if you look at different job careers and if you look at marketing people, they are a unique blend because they make much more money on an average than other people. And why is that so? Because they got this gift of gab. They can convince people to buy the product. They are very good people skills. Social intelligence is what I call that. You know, you need social intelligence to interact with other people. You need interpersonal intelligence and you need intrapersonal intelligence. You know, you need to understand how to talk with ourselves. And so to be an entrepreneur, I have a program on entrepreneurship. I call it a businessman wears 11 hats. You're not only a technocrat, you know, most of the time we start with a technocrat. I had a number of businesses. I started with a print shop. I became quite good with it that I had three print shops in Long Island, right? So I became a technocrat. But in the 90s, I was not a good human being. I was an angry, egoistic, self-centered person. And I realized as soon as I joined Toastmaster that you need to be humble. All right, you need to have empathy. 
You need to have self-awareness. You need to have self-control. These are all the great skills, and we call that package emotional intelligence. That is what I go out and teach, how to be an emotionally intelligent person. It is the number one skill every business person needs. And that's what I teach. It's a very powerful institution, emotional intelligence. It came into the West in the last 25 years, but in the East, it's been there for thousands of years. So I blend the East and the West. And I give the best to my students. And as, when I'm done at the end of the class, I can see some very powerful, happy faces go home, all charged up to change their behaviors because I brought it into their life, how they can get better at it. So yes, Toastmaster will help you in your professional career. Toastmaster will help you in your business career. Whatever you do in your day-to-day -day living life, I can say with tremendous confidence that it will surely make you more successful. Julian? Absolutely. Definitely, uh, as Modi is saying, uh, it will make you more successful because it is a training ground. It is a support group. Uh, it is a business hub for movers and shakers and entrepreneurs. And so what Modi is telling you all, uh, he is telling you nothing but jewels and facts that uh, if you have not heard of Toastmasters or even if you have and you have not taken the first leap, uh, myself and Modi are products of it. Uh, I can uh, attest to a lot of my success, especially in the public speaking arena and getting just more confidence in my leadership skills and listening skills uh, just through Toastmasters International. And so, uh, Modi, I know that a lot of people think that they're great speakers and think that they're confident at, at speaking, but they may uh, lack or be poor listeners or even poor leaders. Um, so talk to us about like, what is the importance of leadership um, and people that are in positions of leadership, knowing how to be great listeners and not just listen uh, to their bosses, but even listen to their fellow employees or even their fellow coworkers or staff. Like why is listening one of the uh, un, unheard of uh, truths that most leaders should have at the top of their arsenal? Again, a wonderful question, a very, very relevant question. You know, why should you listen? All right. Um, most of the time, we listen to respond rather than understand. All right. Most of the time, and I am guilty of it myself, I never used to listen very well. I would react. I would stop people from doing it. Now, I have a program that I teach people about listening. How do you listen better? And here's what I'm going to tell you how you listen better. It's a very powerful thing. So I'm going to take a few minutes and give you a little idea about how this box we are born with. We call it a mindset work. So our mind has four functions. All right. You have the thinking function. You have the uh, feeling function, you have the willing function, the willpower. And the fourth one is you have the staying function, staying in the present awareness. All right. So thinking is our intelligent mindset. Feeling is our emotional mindset. Willing is that willpower, the wireless energy inside us and self-awareness, which is what keeps us attention, keeps us alert. And so while I'm talking to you, think about what is happening in your mind right now. While Modi is talking and you're listening, what is happening in your mind, all right? And the classical thing that most of us do is we overthink, number one. Is Modi saying this thing and suddenly our mind runs into 100 different directions, we overthink, all right, number one. Number two, because of that and other distractions around us, we get emotional when we see somebody when some sensory functions happen we get emotional all right then that third thing is our ego ego is the opposite of humility so this humility ego and willpower are a three-dimensional aspect of our mindset all right and this ego this minus you know modi had a limousine he was so proud of it you know so proud that he would be little the other people he he thought himself of something and other people were the small guys. That ego was bad, all right? And so when you have these three things, thinking, feeling, and ego, 
your awareness goes down. And when your awareness goes down, you don't listen because your mind is corrupted. Our mind has to have a coherence. That means that in our mind, we have waves, alpha, beta, theta, and gamma. There are five waves. And these waves have to function with all the aspects of our mind. You know, the frontal cortex, the limbic system, the reptilian brain. We have three levels of brain, the reptilian brain, the animal brain, and the human brain. All right. And so there are this internet, in, interconnected neurons, neurochemical devices inside us. All right. And if you are overthinking, overfeeling, over egoistic, this, this action takes over your listening. You don't listen because you're not aware of it. So what I tell everybody, if you want to listen, stop your thinking. Don't worry about any feeling. And be humble. That means don't bring your ego in that. And you will listen very well. That is what listening is all about. It's all in the mind. It's not outside. It's all in the mind. It's mindfulness. It's staying in the present, being in the now, and ignoring other things if I want to listen to anybody. So if whilst I'm talking, you feel how you you think how you feel and you'll realize what i'm talking all right thank you yeah absolutely especially with us being uh kings and us being uh men modi i know a lot of uh, men may struggle with this this um trait a lot more than some of our counterparts with the ladies and the queens and uh you uh, of all people have been in multiple leadership positions and have networked uh, with a lot of uh, leaders that are a part of Toastmasters that are also uh, movers and shakers and, and respected uh, leaders in the community here in Atlanta. And so uh, talk to us a little bit about, I know um, people are sometimes shy even in their workplace environment or even amongst their uh, business uh, uh, associates or peers in the community here to really network and really partner up and combine forces to work on whether it's projects and um, uh, leadership uh, opportunities. And so Toastmasters I know gives a lot of clout uh, to leaders working with other leaders. And so talk to us about how did you get to network and to be in certain leadership positions and what were some of the benefits uh, or, or people uh, that benefited you that you met in being in a leadership position in an international organization? Well, it's powerful, all right? I encourage, <clears throat> I encourage every person listening to this program not to even think about it. Just do some volunteer work. You know, the best way to learn leadership is to do some volunteer work, go out and help the world, all right? Um, we need to live a life with three things. <clears throat> Number one is a purposeful life. All right, what is my purpose today? All right, I call myself a warehouse of knowledge and I want to share it with the world because if I don't share it, what good it is, all right? Number two, you want to have a fearless life, all right? I was afraid of death. Now, no, because I realized as a Hindu, that is not bad. You know, we believe in reincarnation and so, it's just the body that's decaying. It's not my spirit. All right. So you have to be fearless. You know, you have to lose the fear of speaking in front of other people. You have to, you, we have so many fears. I had a fear of height. I still have some, but it's much less. All right. And number three, we need to live an unselfish life. All right. The more you give to the universe, the universe will give you multiple times more. Try it out. You'll see what I'm trying to tell you. So we need to live a life with three things. Purposeful life, a fearless life, and an unselfish life. All right. And if you look at these three, you'll find that the best way to follow this is to give it to the universe. Go and do some volunteer work. And my volunteer work started a long time back. When I had my print shop in Long Island, I was the president of the Tri-State Printing Association there. All right. When I came to Atlanta and my kids joined uh, the Boy Scouts, I became a Boy Scouts leader. And I'll tell you, it was awesome. What I learned in Boy Scouts is so good that now 
it also changed my life. You know, I go to India every year and I go on a hiking trip, a cultural trip, an adventure trip, a spiritual trip in the mountains, sometimes going as high as 14,000 feet in minus 20 degrees cold. And I enjoy it. I wouldn't have been able to do that if it not, were not for the Boy Scouts, where I learned to be an outdoor person and, and be an adventurer. And also I gave my services to these boys. You know what I mean? It was so heartwarming to do that. All right. I am currently the treasurer of an organization in Georgia called the Georgia Forest Watch. And we are the caretakers of the forest. We have people on the ground. We have foot soldiers who go out in this national forest and make sure that it is well taken care of. The forest service is also doing their job. People are not abusing it. We are preserving mother nature. So I'm a treasurer of Georgia Forest Watch. And I'll tell you, it's a very, very, very uh, heartwarming thing that I am doing. Um, I started a meetup group for emotional intelligence. I'm a leader in my temple for 10 years. You know, every Sunday from 8 to 12, I gave service to my temple. I would open up the temple. I would set up everything and I would close at 12 o'clock when our prayers were done. And I got so much respect. I also got so much confidence in that. All right. So I can give you lots of stories about how you can help the universe. And this is only in the nonprofit world. By doing that now, I am able to coach leaders, all right? I go out and coach leaders how to be great managers, how to lead their company, how to understand their employees, how to delegate, what type of emotional intelligence they can improve on. And, you know, in the last three years, we've seen a lot of problems with diversity, all right? 2018 was the Me Too movement. 2019 has become the financial inequality the bipolar world in in wealth 2020 you know has been sparking real ablaze with bad things and so i go out and teach diversity and inclusion you know how to look at, how to understand other people with empathy all right how to be self aware how to control yourself how to how to control your implicit biases all right so there's lots of wonderful things that you will learn and Toastmaster is one organization. There's hundreds of other places you can learn that, but I think we can start with Toastmasters. Julian? Yeah, Toastmasters is definitely a, a great foundational organization to start off your leadership or, or even your volunteer experience. And I know it's helped me, it's helped Modi, it's helped uh, millions of other people all across the world really find their voice and also find their sweet spot uh, so that they can uh, literally give their gift uh, unto the world. And so Modi, back to you, sir. We want to make sure uh, that people really get real with themselves, as you said, uh, with culture and diversity. Uh, Toastmasters uh, prides itself on being an international organization that has many diverse leaders in uh, upper level uh, positions that are similar, let's say, to a corporate structure. And so uh, why, why, um, for, from what your uh, stance is, why do you think it's important to accommodate global, um, diverse uh, voices at the table and also to have, especially in leadership positions, uh, diversity uh, so that people can see across the board that there's different uh, nationalities and different cultures speaking? Julian, look at this world now. Borders are being erased. We are getting globalized. Isn't that true? Yeah, yes. All right. And and if you look now, you know, if you look at this world, it's getting smaller. You know, it used to take, for me to go to India, it used to take 30, um, you know, 30, 40 hours. Now I can literally go to India in 15 hours if I take a nonstop flight. All right. So there's a lot of things that are changing. We live in a world that's changing. What changed? What took 50 years to change in the last century is only taking three years to change in this century. Look at the iPhones. You know what I mean? Every time a new iPhone comes, I don't know what the difference is with the generation that's just come out compared to the generation just before that. So things are changing. We are 
coming in a more diverse world there's a lot of traveling in if you look at the corporate world my god it's you no know, it's a blend it's a melting pot you know you have all different colors of skin all different race different languages you go to new york city and it's a big melting pot you know i got this opportunity to come to this country you know i had a little challenges with my accent and things like that culturally i learned it you know what i mean it's such good, so good to do it you know and we all need to keep an open mind for that all right if you see something different doesn't mean that you are better than them okay we all are the same we are we if you look at it our heritage goes down to south africa everybody originated from south africa the dna analysis now say that you know we all started from south africa from a very common ancestor so we are not different the colors may be different but we have the same mindset we have the same dna all right our body works the same way and so toastmaster is also a big melting pot you meet people from all over the world we had in our clubs people from russia europe africa A asia you name it we have people from all over the world in a, a small club like us and remember there's thousands of clubs and if i travel to any place in the world i i'm pretty sure within an hours drive i can find a club and i can attend a meeting there it's reciprocity that's available so please think about it you know how much you can learn you don't have to pay thousands of dollars to modi to learn diversity and inclusion big corporations pay that to me but you can do it for free at the at the club so keep that in mind um by the way i i don't know if people can see the live comments that i put uh on the program here on the steam my steam my art program but if not i will put it on uh facebook a little bit later i have my email address my phone number my uh, company website and my name so i'll do that i don't know julian let me know if you can see what i put on there yeah we got it on the screen modi to stay in touch Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And um with that diversity uh piece Modi like what uh what do you uh think especially nowadays for some of the leaders that you work with um what are some of their struggles um that you uh witness in the marketplace uh that not just lacking with uh confidence or or some of the main things that we see a lot of leaders struggle with but what do you see are some of the current struggles especially during this pandemic era and where do you see um the marketplace going especially when it comes to leadership and speaking i think um julian that's those are two different ways we can look at it all right you talk about leadership and communication you talk about diversity and so let me combine those two into one and tell you in order to become a leader we have to climb this ladder all right of soft skills and what you have to do is just like in the olympics you have the number 1 position you have the second rung which is the number 2 on that pedestal and then you are number 3 all right so you have to build your foundation first when companies tell, come and tell me that we want leadership training the first thing i ask them is tell me how much training they have had in the before in the past all right tell me what they do is there an assessment that we can look at and generally what i find is people don't need leadership training till they have done the foundational training so here's my my way of looking at soft skills training to climb that olympic pedestal to go on the first level number 1 you need is emotional intelligence emotional intelligence is understanding of the self by the self for the self understanding of the self by the self for the self all right so if you don't understand yourself how good it is you cannot interact with people all right both intrapersonal communication and interpersonal communication so emotional intelligence is very powerful okay it teaches you how to think and feel in harmony for example I'm diabetic and if I'm walking past a Baskin Robbins my emotions overpower me and say I need to buy an ice cream my intelligence stops me because I am diabetic and there is a battle inside me there's a 
constant and that's what happens in all of us to do or not to do all right if your emotions are stronger than your thinking you're going to buy that ice cream so you've got to learn how to control those emotions self-awareness self-control empathy social intelligence self-motivation humility those are the six components of emotional intelligence and that is the first thing i would suggest everybody to do and if anybody has a question please don't hesitate to contact me number two once you do that you learn need to learn once you know you you made your mind powerful the second thing you need to learn is how to communicate so communication skills are very important listening skills how to conduct meetings all right those are wonderful wonderful skills without communication you cannot be a manager you cannot be a leader and the third thing in the foundation is social intelligence how to build relationships how to influence other people there are four steps in relationships all right um, I wish I had the time to go into these four steps. I need about half an hour to an hour to go into these four steps. But that's how you build relationships. You know, it starts with a simple connection. You know, you meet somebody at a Toastmasters club. I met Julian at the Toastmasters club and I started with a connection. I had his phone number. I had his address, email address. Then we had, you know, we went a little bit further. And now we have, I'm sorry, the first step is the contact. The second step is the connection, all right? The third step is the influence. Now I can tell Julian because I, you know, I'm a little bit senior to him in Toastmasters and I can tell him how to do the right way. And the last step is of course confidence. You know, if I called your donkey, would you be upset at me? No, because you know me so well, right? That's confidence. Mostly it's between partners, it's spouse, but if you can go at that level, so social intelligence is the third thing. You start with emotional intelligence, you have communication skills, you have social intelligence skills, and that's the foundation. The next step is how to work as a team, level two, and how to manage people, how to delegate, how to manage, how to motivate, things like that. And once you have these five things done, then you're ready to become a leader. Then you learn how to do the leadership part of it, how to lead. How do you walk with people? How to be like Mother Teresa? How to be like Nelson Mandela? All right. How to be like Mahatma Gandhi? Because when Mahatma Gandhi said something, half a billion people changed their action. They acted on it. That's how powerful leadership is. Can you do that? So, yes, this is challenging time. You want to learn diversity and inclusion. It comes with all these skills that we have because it's all inside our mind. It's not outside, you know. So here's I'm going to leave you with one small question. Think about a hero that you adore. All right. Think about a hero that you like. Think about the characteristics of the hero, somebody who's a role model. You want to be like them. You want to emulate them. You want to eulogize them. All right. And now think about three qualities of that hero. All right. Why do you like him or her so much? Why do Modi like Mahatma Gandhi? All right, nonviolence, you know, whatever you want to call it, civil disobedience, humility, all right, all those wonderful things. And if you think of these characteristics of this hero that you have, they are all to do with soft skills most of the time. And yet, we human beings judge people based on their external appearance. You see where I'm going? Instead of understanding people for what's inside them, we understand people on what outside their characteristics are. And then we start this big mess that's happening in 2020. Again, as I said, you know what I mean? We are all one. A very famous uh, Sufi poet from Persia, Sufi poet, he said a very powerful quote. I am a drop in an ocean and an ocean in every drop. I am a drop of consciousness in this wild world of consciousness. And I have the same qualities of this consciousness in every cell in me. Oneness. All right. We are all one. We are all related. We don't need to fight. We can all share what we have. 
it's this greed that we have inside us that comes from this ego the possessiveness the objects that we have my phone is better than your my house is bigger than your i have a fancier car modi had a nice stretch limousine nothing you know it brought anger and ego and self centeredness inside him he lost friends because of that so i urge you all all right to believe in this universal consciousness and go out and learn this wonderful 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 soft skills to make this world a better place for all of us and for our kids and the grandkids thank you julian back to you absolutely modi and i know uh it's definitely important to have those those uh, hard and soft skills in the marketplace or even as an entrepreneur and a business owner uh which uh goes to our final question before we allow you to give the final jewel modi because we don't we don't want to uh uh have you on here but we want you to be here for a part 2 uh to teach a little bit uh with sure. said, uh, the importance of hard and soft skills so we just want to end uh with the importance of mentorship and coaching uh you of all people uh have been a coach to myself and also a mentor but also you've had uh and I've heard you speak about them eloquently with your presentations and your speeches the importance of being under a guide a coach a mentor and actually a guide or coach or mentor that is um able to direct you and or also able to as you said hold your hand and help you grow and so talk talk to us about uh like how have you uh progressed in your mentorship and giving mentorship to others and also receiving a uh, mentorship from uh, uh leaders that you look up to through being a toastmaster very powerful question julian and coincidentally yesterday in our toastmasters meeting you know tony right yes tony gave a speech on mentorship how mentorship helped her in this ladder of toastmastership and i was evaluating her so coincidentally it just came up and that's awesome so um you know there is a relationship between a teacher and a student and again i go into three steps on that the first step is what is happening in the current school is the teacher is sharing information with the student nowadays that thing has been diluted because google has a lot of things available all right so just giving information is not knowledge that's the first step in this knowledge all right you, to convert that information into knowledge it takes more than that you know it shake takes to i was going to keep this as my final word but i'm going to bring it here is it we need to change the belief system all right if i change your belief system then it will create an intention to do something all right if i create if you create an intention to do something then you will have an action a, a thinking and a feeling going in that mind because now you have an intention to do something that thinking and feeling create some action and if that action is positive and rewarding that means you release dopamine every time you do that then it becomes a habit and if that if you if if you inculcate that habit it will become a way of your life toastmasters is a way of life for me all right it wasn't before 2004 but now it's a way of life for me i've been a toastmasters for 16 years so it becomes a way of your life and this way of your life defines your character i call it pcm personality character and maturity pcm it's a triangular stuff they are all interrelated and this pcm makes you who you are makes you successful all right so it all starts from the belief system and so this teacher student relationship has to do a lot with this belief system just by giving you knowledge is not going to happen unless i encourage you to work on it and change your belief system so that's the first level the second level is what we call a mentorship a mentorship is more vested in a student than a teacher is all right its teacher is more transactional now some teachers go beyond that so i'm not going to take it away from that all right a mentorship is a little a step above that there is a little bit of give and take there is more respect here there is mutual trust but the third level that i want to talk to you about is what i call a guru g u r u 
you know, in the Western world, the term guru has been diluted. But in the Eastern world, it's very powerful. If you look at the yoga, uh, prof the yoga teachers nowadays, you know, it went through a lineage from master to disciple. And it went down this route. You know, the disciple then become a master and it went down this route for thousands of years. Buddha has his lineage, the Dalai Lama. Think about it. So it went out through this lineage. There is a connection at the spiritual level when you talk about guru. And the guru does one thing very powerful. They awaken you from inside. You get awakened. You get it gets so powerful and I can I, I have my gurus in India. That's when I go to India, you know, every year I go to India, I go to the Himalayas, I go to a monastery and I stay with my gurus. And they have inspired me. They have awakened me. They have done so much for me. And, you know, the bottom line is they've never asked me for anything. They prayed for me. They have blessed me. So that's where I want to go is from a teacher to a mentor to a guru. And if we can practice that institution of sharing and caring, I think we will be in a wonderful place. Julian? Yeah, it's important, uh, fellow Jews who are watching, to have uh, multiple, especially as Modi say, gurus or mentors or coaches, because uh, they know a lot more than us, especially my generation, millennials and Gen Zers. Uh, think that uh, we know uh, more than, uh, again, our gurus or our mentors or coaches uh, that came before us. And so all of us need uh, someone to be a coach to or to be coached by. And so, uh, Modi, I know we're at the final, uh, the final leg of, of this race, uh, but as you know, we always give uh, the opportunity for having our guests uh, drop a final jewel or a final thought uh, a piece of wisdom that you can give to our audience that have been hearing you. Uh, they've heard your journey, your story, and coming from India, uh, not knowing any English, to being right now a full-fledged, uh, 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 affluent English speaker uh, here in Atlanta, Georgia. And then uh, just you've dropped a ton of jewels when it comes to soft skills versus hard skills and the importance of being a great communicator versus a great listener. But what would be your final uh, jewel for thought, Modi, that you want to leave with the audience this evening before we depart. All right. All right. So remember I said we need to change our belief system. That is the most important thing that I'm trying to impress upon you, you know. I, up till 2000, uh, up till 1991, I was an atheist. I only believed in pure proven science. And then something happened in my life and I became a little bit spiritual. I called it the metaphysical world. Why? Because somebody changed my belief system that there is more than science that we cannot explain going to beyond science, the metaphysical world. And when I took my first step, miracles happened. All right. Somebody changed my belief system. And I can't thank that person enough. And so it all starts with your belief system. So here's what I'm going to tell you. You need to learn. You need to learn with an open mind. Where do you stand? Is your mind open or is your mind closed? If you have an open mind, things will open for you. You will learn new things. If you have a closed mind, I know everything. I don't need anything more. I am the bestest. God bless you. All right, you need a curious mind, okay? So you have to change this location in your mind to go higher with an open mind, a curious mind, a spongy mind, all right? And so you need to learn. We will keep on learning till our last breath. It will. We will take it to our grave. Whether you un agree with me or not, it's true. We still keep on learning. And so here's how you learn. I'm going to give you four steps of learning. <clears throat> it's a it's four quadrants number one is i don't know what i don't know that means modi did not know what toastmasters is before the year 2000 even though it existed then such a powerful thing existed i did not know 
Then my mentor told me about Toastmasters in the year 2000. So I went to Squadron 2. I know what I don't know. I don't know about communication and leadership skills yet. <clears throat> and so now that discovery stage led me to the third stage, which is the learning stage. All right. At the intellectual level, we understand that, which is I know what I know. Modi spent 16 years to know Toastmastership. And now I know what I know. All right. And we all go through that third stage. You, you read a nice book and say, you think, oh, I know how to be a great leader. All right. I know how to cook because I read this book. I know to do this because I watched the video. And that's where we stop. I know I went to Tony Robbins' um, seminar and I know how to get myself better and be a great entrepreneur. And that's where we stop at quadrant three. And that's the fallacy of our understanding. Because you don't learn just by understanding. You learn when you make it a way of your life by experiential. And that's how I teach. If I have to teach you something, I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm going to ask you what you're going to do. And then I'm going to lead you to a path. And then we'll have to interact that. All right. So the fourth quadrant is, I don't know what I know. Now, when I go to Toastmasters, I don't need to know anything. I'll just go there and it will automatically flow seamlessly. You can wake me in the middle of the night and I can work on Toastmastership. I can give speeches. All right. Just like you don't need to think when you wake up in the morning, what leg should you put out of your bed? Is it your left or your right? All right. I'll give you a true example if you can see me. All right. If you take the right hand and you turn it like this, all right? It's easy, right? And now you take your left hand and you turn it in your reverse direction. Okay? Reverse direction. So right left. Now I urge you, on the contrary, I challenge you to do both of them simultaneously. Right, left, right, left. You won't be able to do it. Even though you can do it without it, you won't. What is that happen? Is because you know it at level three, you did not go to level four. And when you go to level four, when you practice, when you experience it, when you make it a way of life, you can do it anytime after that. That's what level four is. If you want to learn something, change your belief system go to level four and things will grow so well you will be people will come to you and learn from you julia yeah absolutely definitely um and keeping that open mind and having um your mindset shifted to being uh, a giver versus always a receiver uh, you'll, you'll naturally be blessed as you said modi uh, my final jewel along with you modi uh, would literally uh, just be uh, to latch yourself on to a vehicle uh, that is going uh, somewhere for the long distance. Um, a lot of times we know of different pop-up uh, schemes, different um, scams, different uh, people that are suggesting uh, certain projects or certain groups to latch on to, and they shut down within three to five years or less, or they're not uh, really having the right integrity or right character that you want to exhibit. Uh, but because your friend, your auntie, your cousin, or your coworker, or possibly even your mate suggested it, uh, you decided to go along with it. Uh, but I would suggest especially latching on to organizations that have sustainability, that have trained, uh, that have developed uh, tons of leaders, gurus, as Modi said, or even entrepreneurs, um, that are, are sustainable in Toastmasters International. I know I've been a product of Toastmasters uh, with my professional speaking career, with entrepreneurship, with Modi's professional speaking career, with his entrepreneurship endeavors. Uh, we are both products of a sustainable organization like Toastmasters. And so uh, if you have not heard about it, I highly suggest again, ToastmastersInternational.org. We'll put it on the screen one more time before we end. Uh, get involved and see how you can develop the true leader within you uh, through a vehicle that is going somewhere. And so that's been our time, Modi. I know it's been a pleasure uh, serving with you, sir. Um, as you know, uh, we thank you again for being a, a VIP uh, jewel 
uh, on the show uh, for this Tuesday. And also, uh, we definitely got to talk about possibly having you come back and, and educate uh, the audience about the difference on a, on a soft versus hard uh, skill basis so that they can know the importance of your craft that you uh, teach for your services, especially. Thank you, Julian. And I have a request for the audience. Please, please, please. I am still learning. So send me some good nuggets of advice, suggestions, all right, even criticisms, because that's what I'm going to learn, you know. So please send me that and I will I can't thank you enough for it. And again, please be in touch with me. I am here to help. Thank you so much. Absolutely, Modi. And we'll definitely be in touch, sir. But I'm going to say a quick prayer over you to let you enjoy the rest of your evening and, and to definitely uh, thank you for blessing us with the jewels this evening. And then we'll definitely let you enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Perfect. Uh, Father God, I just want to thank you uh, for um, Modi uh, coming here on the RTJ show and just uh, dropping the jewels uh, with our audience to let them know uh, how uh, you cannot make excuses to say uh, why you're not developing, why you're not uh, perfecting your skills, why you're even not learning a, a new or foreign language, uh, because he's a product of being able to come uh, from a distant land and to also uh, perfect uh, his speaking, perfect his leadership, and most importantly, uh, become a business owner and entrepreneur. And so we thank you uh, for uh, his uh, career journey, um, not just through Toastmasters, but through all the service that he does in the community with serving others. Uh, we pray uh, that you will bless him uh, more than his measures uh, expected for the end of this year uh, with different doors and different opportunities uh, to open up uh, just from him opening his voice and also um, being a servant leader, a true servant leader. And so we uh, thank you for his message and also him being the messenger. And we love you. And I thank you for um, his uh, persistence and also his patience in uh, leading uh, with authority. And I love you and I praise you. And it's in Jesus name. I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, Modi. I appreciate you coming on, sir, and blessing our audience. We definitely got to have you back soon, sir. And you enjoy the rest of your week. Same to everybody and call me anytime. <laughs> I know you take it easy. Peace.